Ladies and gentlemen, dear friends, it gives me a great pleasure to address you uh, in Australia. And uh, I must express real sorrow. I was not there with you uh, to address you face to face, to talk to you, to, to engage uh, in a discussion that I have kept with Australian friends over a long period of time. My first uh, visit to, to Australia was in 1989, and uh, uh, I visited uh, Australia two or three times after that, uh, um, basically as the, uh, the, the Minister for International Cooperation, which was the pseudonym for uh, Minister of Foreign Affairs at the time, when we signed the Oslo Peace Agreement in Washington in 1994, and uh, started the Palestinian Authority with the great hope that uh, this uh, signature, this peace accord uh, would deliver in uh, three years a permanent settlement and in five years an independent Palestinian state on the borders of 1967 with uh, uh, East Jerusalem, the capital of that independent Palestinian state. Uh, there was a lot of hope in the uh, early 90s that uh, peace is coming and peace in the Holy Land must carry with it a great importance, not only to Palestinians and Israelis, but to, every, to everybody in the world. It, it, it was the kind of peace that uh, fit uh, belief in God. Whether you're a Christian, a Jew, or a Muslim, uh, it was the Holy Land. And peace in the Holy Land was extremely important. Unfortunately, this peace did not work out. We are still fully occupied by the Israeli army. Uh, we are fully controlled by the Israeli army. Uh, the Israelis withdrew unilaterally from Gaza and encircled Gaza and bombarded Gaza three times uh, uh, in the last few years, 2008, 2009, 2012, and 2014, and destroyed most of its houses and infrastructure and encircled it and separated it totally from the West Bank. In the West Bank, there is nothing but a colonial settlement project that is proceeding with impunity to take over most of the land uh, in the West Bank. Uh, when we signed the Oslo Accords in Washington in 1994, uh, there was 160,000 Israeli colonial settlers in the West Bank and Gaza. Today, uh, there are close to 700,000 colonial settlers. And in 24 years, instead of ending the colonial settlement program and uh, ending the Israeli occupation of the West Bank and Gaza, uh, instead, the number of colonial settlers have quadrupled, in fact. And uh, today, 62% of the area of the West Bank labeled Area C in the agreements uh, which should have been totally evacuated in three years uh, after the signature of Oslo. Uh, this agreement uh, has not been fulfilled, and the 62% Area C is today inhabited by 400,000 Israeli colonial settlers and 100,000 Palestinians. So in effect, in two-thirds of the West Bank, there is now an Israeli colony. Uh, which really covers all the agricultural land of the West Bank, all the water resources of the West Bank. Uh, Palestinians in the West Bank today are simply in cities and, 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 and towns and big villages. They, they're not anywhere where they can really develop their agriculture or make use of their uh, water resources. In fact, if you look at the statistics, 92% of the water resources of the West Bank are used, are taken over and used by the, the colonial settlers, the 700,000 colonial settlers, and 8% of our water is used by 4.5 million Palestinians in the West Bank and Gaza. Uh, what has really uh, emerged out of the Oslo Agreement uh, is catastrophic in, in more ways than one. Uh, today, the speed with which the Palestinian East Jerusalem has, has been taken over by the Israelis uh, uh, where the, the Palestinians are considered residents of, of East Jerusalem rather than citizens of their own uh, birthplace and their own t 
town and country, they are harassed everywhere. If they leave for a few years and come back, they lose their right to reside in their own hometown and the hometown of their grandfathers and ancestors. So what really is the status quo today is totally unsatisfactory and does not really uh, fulfill any of the commitments that the Israelis have uh, signed for back in 1994. That is not to say that there were no achievements whatsoever. No, between 1994 and 1996, during the uh, administration of the late Prime Minister Rabin and then Mr. Peres, there was some progress. Uh, uh, about 200,000 uh, Palestinians came back f f f into the West Bank and Gaza from the, from the Palestinian diaspora all around the world. There was a Palestinian authority established. Uh, the Israelis withdrew from major cities and towns in the West Bank and Gaza, starting with Gaza and Jericho and then extending to Nablus and uh, Hebron and uh, Tul Karim and, and other places, excluding East Jerusalem, of course. And uh, as a result, uh, a government was established, uh, administration was established, uh, institutions of a future state were, were being established. Uh, we, in, in a year's time, we went into uh, ele elections and full democracy was established by legislative elections and presidential elections and a, and a constitution and uh, unification of laws, uh, establishment of schools. We built in the first uh, five years 150 schools a year, i.e. on the average of building a school every two days in order to make up for the grave loss of schools during the Israeli occupation. We built hospitals, we built universities. There was only one university when we came in. Uh, we built nine universities and today there are 45 university level colleges uh, in, in, in the West Bank and Gaza. Uh, we built industrial zones, we built a, uh, an airport in Gaza and we were building a harbor in Gaza. Most of this, unfortunately, was destroyed later um, by the Israeli occupation. And a lot of the fruits of peace that we bargained for and we are willing to make a major uh, concession for, and that is to only uh, get back 22% uh, of Palestine, which is the West Bank and Gaza, and establish a state on that 22%. Today, that 22% is still fully occupied by the Israelis. And uh, our quest for sovereignty, for independence, uh, for real peace based in, on, on cooperation between the Palestinians and the Israelis, uh, uh, creating a, a democratic, uh, tolerant, uh, uh, secular society has really been vitiated by uh, the continued colonial settlement and occupation uh, uh, of the uh, Israeli forces of the, of the West Bank. However, we have not given up and uh, we're still trying to pursue negotiations. Lately, it was the French who came up with a French initiative, setting up an international arena for selecting a negotiating group that will sit down with the Israelis and Palestinians uh, to start once again negotiating, starting from the agreements that we've signed and from international uh, le legitimacy and international resolutions. and an attempt to really revive the peace process. Uh, but so far, I cannot re really report much pro progress on, on, on that question. The world is changing. Global power uh, is, 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 is changing. The, the United States is not today the only owner of the universe. The world is moving into a multipolar world. But the rules of the game have not been set yet. And that might explain something like Brexit and something like other changes that are difficult to understand, except uh, with the changing power relationships and power alliances in the world. The destruction of Syria and the millions of refugees and the growth of, 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 of terrorism and all of that are, on, are partly explained by this change in the world, but also partly ex explained by the continued non-solution of the Palestinian problem. Uh, there has to be a solution, and I do not see any solution that is possible and, and implementable other than a two-state solution. 
we once opted for a one democratic secular state for all the Jews, Christians, and Muslims of Palestine and Israel to live in a country where uh, uh, church is separated from state and which democracy rules the political life and tolerance rules the, the religious and, and social life. Uh, but the Israelis will not take that. And that's why we had to go to a two-state solution. And I don't see any other solution today. We are not going anywhere. We Palestinians are in our homeland and we will remain in our homeland. And the Israelis are there to stay. Then. Therefore, there are two peoples who have to be accommodated. And the idea of two states in peace and security side by side is the only viable, the only achievable uh, solution of the problem. And we are all for it up till this minute. We have our own problems. We have to achieve our own internal unity. We have to rebuild our own democracy. And may I tell you that the reason I'm not in Australia is I am one of those planning for the National Congress of Fatah to be held here in Ramallah uh, in, uh, on the 29th uh, of this month, uh, November. It's the first time we have a Congress since uh, uh, 2009, that is in seven years. And therefore, our full return to uh, democracy within the major political party, secular democratic political party, Fatah, is also a beginning of uh, uh, national elections uh, for a legislative council and for a president. Therefore, reviving democracy is something we are going to build. Reviving our economy, uh, make it more self-sustainable is, is part of our goals. Uh, extending our relationship to the rest of the world, seeking support for a peaceful process that has been really very difficult to achieve so far, to end the Israeli occupation, to end the colonial settlement program and build a, a democratic secular society that is prosperous and peaceful and secure uh, in Palestine. And therefore, I'd like to conclude by saying that uh, we look to Australia uh, for support. When I first came to Australia, I uh, was really uh, quite happy to, to meet with Australians, to see the change of Australia into a rainbow society, to see Australia opening to the world despite all the physical distance that separated us from Australia. Australia was represented in the Palestinian Authority and the Australian people and government and NGOs contributed to, to important projects uh, in, in Palestine uh, helping to establish the institutions of uh, the coming Palestinian state in peace uh, with Israel. Uh, I uh, had a chance to meet with the Australian Jewish community at the time, and I had a chance to meet with everybody, uh, really, that was willing uh, to see me, and uh, uh, including the foreign minister at the time, Mr. Gareth Evans, who became quite a good friend, many others. In, in, in your parliament, uh, but you are too far away. I mean, it was very difficult for me to continue my uh, trips to Australia, uh, and I really wanted very much to have come this time, had it not been for the Congress that I am part of its organizing committees. We looked to Australia uh, to help in bringing back a peace process, in supporting the rights of the Palestinian people, in supporting the creation of an independent Palestinian state in, that is secular, democratic, progressive, in, in peace with its, its neighbor, to, uh, to end the, the, the conflict and bring real peace to the Middle East is something I know uh, uh, would be part of the objectives of Australians, even though they are so far away. I, promise to come the next time I have an, I have an opportunity uh, to come to Australia. Uh, I, I like your country very much. I like Sydney in particular. Uh, uh, I've been to Melbourne and to Canberra, of course, and Brisbane, many other uh, places. And uh, I wish Australia uh, prosperity and, and uh, uh, peace and security and progress in the future. And I still hope that Australia will be a partner for the Palestinian people, supporting their rights and, and supporting any action that would bring real peace and progress uh, in the Palestinian-Israeli context and a real independent Palestinian state that 
contributes to world peace and justice. Thank you very much.